Hello and good afternoon, everybody. Very glad to um, not so much see you, but know that you're there. Welcome to EVCOM's session, Creativity in the Time of Corona. Um, the session will uh, go on for about 45 minutes, so you'll be with us till quarter to five. Um, just a few housekeeping uh, points first and foremost. Uh, could I ask if anybody has any questions, please could you post them into the Q&A section? Um, and then we're also asking uh, one question uh, to get a word out of you, that if you could put that into the comments section, so that's a separate section, that would be great. Um, so the, the question we were, we're asking is if you could come up with the one word to describe your current creative state. So the whole panel will be doing this as well. So one word to describe your current creative state. And if you could put that in the comments section, that would be great. Um, I will corral all the questions that go into the Q&A section and we'll be putting those to the panel uh, towards the end. So we'll be saving those and collating them and uh, putting them in groups so that uh, we can put them to the panel about 10 minutes before the end. Uh, but with that, I'll pass you over to our facilitator this afternoon, who is Dean Beswick, and he is um, the creative partner at Gorilla Gorilla, um, and he will lead the discussion and um, also manage the questions uh, to, the, to the panel. So without further ado, I'd like to pass you over to Dean. Thanks, Claire. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, delighted to be able to facilitate this session on uh, creativity in the site. Uh, in, during the Corona crisis. Um, we've got some amazing speakers here today who are gonna to share their thoughts and their experiences um, and obviously some frustrations as well. But I think the main thing is that we want to try and focus on any positives that we can take from this as much as possible. So this is very much an open conversation. Um, just to kick things off, I'd like everybody in turn just to spend a quick minute to introduce themselves and also to give their one word uh, experience of uh, the current time. So we want to start with uh, Matt. Fantastic. Thank you, Dean. Uh, hi, everyone out there. Um, I'm Matthew Markson. I'm founder and innovation director at Smile. And um, my one word to sum this up, which is slightly tricky, but I think in seeing what I have over the past uh, weeks, I think it has to be humble, um, is my word. Uh, humble at uh, seeing kind of how everyone's come together and some really inspirational pieces of creativity out there. Thanks, Matt. And um, uh, Angela, could you introduce yourself? Hello, hi, Dee, and hi, everybody. It's Angela Law from Every Sense. Um, we're a specialist business consultancy. We help lots of different types of agencies to grow. Um, and I guess my one word is exhilarated. So, you know, lots of challenging things going on, but also some fascinating collaboration, inventiveness, ability to just can do and reimagine things on the part of uh, all different kinds of agencies. Thanks, Angela. And uh, Stephen, can you introduce yourself? Hi, um, thanks, Dean. Hello, everybody. I'm um, Steve Kwa. CEO of Cheerful 21st. Um, if I was going to come up with one word, it would be excitement. Um, I think um, as, as a creative agency, I think we thrive on challenges and I think you thrive in adversity and I think there's opportunities. And parking the human tragedy and um, my thoughts go out to everybody. I think this is a massive opportunity to reset the business, to be honest. And I think the industry was due a bit of a reset. Uh, and I think in a positive way, the value will go back to what, a, what creative is. I think that's a creative, you know, how you, how you solve solutions is about creativity. So excitement, I see excitement. Thanks, Stephen. And hi, Karen, could you introduce yourself? Hi, Dean. Hi, everyone. I'm Karen Cade, and I'm one of the um, founders and managing partner of Brands at Work. We're a creative engagement agency. Um, my one word would be curious. Um, I, I think uh, there's a tension there in the great unknown and how this has decimated many industries and companies and agencies and peers' lives, but I'm in, in a lot of ways also curious about um, the sense of wonder this might unleash in everyone about how can we do better, how can we elevate the creativity, and how can we do better in the realm of communicating, um, even if it has to be at a distance, 
So that would be my world. Always question everything, challenge everything. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Um, I, I, won't, uh, I won't introduce myself, um, but my, I think my word would be uh, uh, Zooming. <laughs> um, we're spending an awful lot of time on that at the moment, but you know, hopefully, like everybody, and we were talking about this yesterday as a group, that it's providing obviously a, a really new way of doing things. Um, what we're going to do is that we're going to cover off sort of four broad areas that we've talked about that we thought might be interesting to explore around creativity on a project level, on an agency level, for clients, and then also in the wider world. Now, none of our speakers today know who I'm going to come to first with their questions, so they have a slightly surprised look on their face, uh, <laughs> you know why. But I'm going to come back to Karen, if that's okay, with our first question in the sort of project space, which is a, ma it's a massive question. Which is, has this common global experience impacted the search for originality? Oh. Um, well done, Karen. Karen um, <laughs> oh. What I would say is that today and yesterday, you shared a couple of really interesting examples that something that had just popped out from you from somewhere completely different. I mean, you mentioned the, uh, the likeness between the government's uh, colour coding and Nando's peri-peri heat <laughs> coding. You know, but I mean, is there a danger that we're all going to be basically you know, searching for the very, the same stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, I think necessity is the mother of invention. And I, you know, I think we're all really sick of the word pivoting. So I'm just going to say pure <laughs> wedding from now on. Um, but, you know, in, in terms of originality, it's everywhere. You know, we've probably all been falling down the sort of scroll hole of Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn and everywhere. And, and, and in that space, and TikTok, I mean, I don't think I'm the target audience, might be a little bit too old for it, but I have been amazed by the stuff coming out there. I've even tuned in. And so I have to say, I'm finding the creative inspiration coming from unexpected places, not necessarily the same corridors of, of, of inspiration I would have walked previously. I'm, I've, I've, the, the lens has been widened, um, and I'm, I'm looking in unusual places, and I think our, our clients are counting on us to come to them because we're all staring at the same four walls every day. So they're looking to us to say, okay, how can you see beyond those four walls? And um, that's what they're paying us to do. And, and, and that's what we, what we can do. And so some of those examples of, you know, even my personal life, you know, I'm a mom of, of two little people and, and how did we pirouette when it came to Easter? Well, we went on a virtual Easter egg hunt around the neighborhood and, and we got a whole bunch of neighbors to put up Easter eggs in their windows. You saw the rainbow project probably all around your neighborhoods. And I think those are all examples of society and humanity pivoting in this space. So I think originality has never been more present than it is right now. Um, if, you, if you are on Instagram, look up Jake Gyllenhaal. He's become sort of the quarantine poster boyfriend for everyone. He's, he's participating in the One Minute um, Play Project, which is just an incredible initiative that's about telling stories in under, you know, in under 24 hours and using their talents to express themselves. I think, I think it's a beautiful thing. Thanks, Karen. That was, that was really interesting. I mean, Matt, from your point of view, you know, is obviously you do a variety of things with, within Smile. I mean, it is, I mean, I mean, originality is a challenge, full stop, you know, but I mean, do you find that you you know you're, there's a commonality to the experience that's kind of helping in some way? I I have to say I agree with Karen totally. I, I, originality, I think, actually is possibly easier now because we we've, we've got everyone. The whole globe is locked in uh, in terms of creativity. And actually, uh, let's take a step back. It's actually more about uh, we're all humans, and and it's that need that uh, in, that need that desire for humans to connect with humans. And whilst this, uh, that medium has been taken away from us uh, and we're all on Zooming and we've got Zoom fatigue, I think there's actually how people have actually curbed that and got around that. Whether you look at uh, the Italian uh, balcony bands that really come out or, you know, and, and spark this off in, in terms of how they manage to still communicate with their street. Or if you look at like Obama and Lady Gaga just about to do a, a graduation for all the uh, graduates in the USA, uh, down to things like, Fisher Price and Playmobil. Now you think that's something completely irrelevant, but I love the fact they've created a set of figures called heroes. And those heroes, all the money that they're getting from that is all going into the communities. And it shows how actually brands are reacting as well in an authentic and honest way to this. But I think that, that it's across all walks of life where we're, we're seeing creativity come out. So I think actually it's, 
it's making for a really interesting time and shaking a lot of things up at the moment. I mean, you talked a bit about this um, yesterday, Stephen, about how it's sort of changing, uh, um, sort of, you know, changing your view on sort of projects in terms of what's, what's the best thing to kind of focus on. I mean, do you think that sometimes it's not necessarily about originality, but maybe just pointing things in a slightly different direction? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think the power of creativity is going to be amplified now. I think, uh, and, and in some ways, um, you know, we are experts in a certain medium to date, which is about engagement, honesty, and communication with our clients and staff, etc. Um, and then get moving forward, is, you know, being open to um, this mad gold rush and trying to cut through really what is important again. And again, it's human interaction. So I was going back to the excitement bit about the challenge. It's, it's a huge opportunity for us to kind of really focus on where the value is that we add as agencies. And I, and I hope that's a good thing for every creative service industry going forward because um, it certainly won't be the tech companies, I hope. But anyway, um, yes, <laughs> uh, I, think, um, uh, I think also clients are very confused. We're all confused as well. So, you know, there's a certain amount of education to go on about, again, what do you want to do? What are you trying to achieve? And also not throw out the baby with the bath also. And we'll, I think we'll probably talk about it later on about this virtual gold rush and how crazy it is because it's not really, that's not, that's not what it's not all about. It's not about that at all going forward. Um, yes. I mean, Stephen's mentioned something interesting there, Angela, about agencies kind of, uh, you know, focusing on the sort of core area of their value proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering if you could talk about that a little bit, particularly with, you know, from a project point of view as well, you know, for in a lot of senses, the options are a little bit limited for lots of different creative agencies. It, it, it's interesting, isn't it? I think from that agency and value proposition point of view, I think the agencies that have got strong client relationships, especially at a strategic, strategic level, you know, their clients have been saying, once they looked around and went, whoa, now what do we do, which we've all been doing, their clients came to them and said, what can we do? We think we need this. How can you help us? And that, how can you help us? Those big questions really open up the possibilities for originality and creativity. And I, I think that's what, how agencies have been responding. And that's a very positive thing. I think also the other thing that can be positive is perhaps some of the timescales and the decision making. Because it's such a dynamic situation and nobody knows what's going to happen. If somebody needs to say something, they potentially need to say it really quickly and communicate something quickly in the now because it's going to change so quickly and that's led to some really interesting creativity and originality to get ideas and messages out to people really quickly rather than kind of sitting on it and overthinking it um, so I think it's led to uh, certainly I've seen with the, the agencies and the work that we've all seen in the world a, a kind of big change in that potential for responsiveness and collaboration and just inventing things all over again and that 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 is really interesting and exciting i think mm. exhilarating <laughs> sorry Stephen, go on <laughs> no exhilarating as you said angela yeah yeah <laughs> sorry. it is sorry yeah if yeah. uh, i was going to come to you as the, as the random first person for the next question angela so there's, there's quite okay. a nice follow-on there about okay. Yeah, so are you ready? No, but yeah. just in t you mentioned it there in terms of people innovating in, in new ways. I mean, is there an example in particular that's really stuck out for you? Uh, hmm. I think the, the idea that instead of people, instead of agencies thinking actually we're experts in a particular channel or a particular means of delivery, to really kind of go back to the essence of agencies thinking about themselves and their skills as communicators. So they may have ended up being specialists in one thing or another, but at their core, part of their skill set is that ability to communicate. And so and that's in greater need than ever. Uh, interestingly enough, because the whole world is almost is going through a similar experience. We're all kind of human. We're all experiencing the same journey that gives fantastic opportunities for creativity that is really going to land because we will all get it and enjoy it in the same way that we were talking earlier about seeing this fantastic creativity on on different social media channels um i guess from a client point of view 
I suspect before long it's going to need to move into something where, well, it, it already is in, in kind of brand sense, where people, where clients are saying, this is great, but we need to make sure that what we stand for and our brand has some kind of differentiation in it. And so I think agencies really get into grips with that and supporting their clients to be, to demonstrate that brand and potentially to be even braver about it and to dive down those little wormholes of nuggets of insight about human behavior and what do we really feel and how does this match up with what we want to communicate. I think that might be, who knows, that might be some of the next phase. Thanks, Angela. I could see you nodding along, Matt, and thanks for the, I mean, you got some thoughts on that. Yeah, so I, I, I completely agree with Angela. I think it, they're, they're this, so this innovation question is slightly a tricky one because, yes, we, we've had to innovate and there's a, there's a whole uh, cocktail of different solutions out there, but, and people have got fixated on it. And actually, I think it comes back to that, that human piece again and about experience design, which I know there's super talented people across the whole industry who, who uh, are about experience design. And I think they, they slightly got railroaded in this kind of platform uh, and screen and zooming and that what other platforms can bolt in and innovate and actually the need is about human connection um, and doing that in creative ways which might mean that you do need some of that innovative uh, process and, and, and devs to come in and help you with that but actually the, the, the design if we look at the, the top level of it I find actually mixing that that intersection between uh, technology and humanity is the interesting place that's the sweet spot for me where actually some analog things are, are really powerful as well as that. And actually think about where, where the audience is, where are they sitting? Like they have a hope, but they don't have to be in the office. So where can they exactly. be around there? And how do you exactly. bring that to life? So, um, so I think there's, there's so much opportunity when we just open out and, and, and go back to actually what we were doing before with experience design, but just doing it in slightly different ways. So I suppose don't panic and, and, and remember what everyone's good at. Yeah, I mean, I can't just add to that. I think uh, going back to what Angela was saying, to the essence and what you're saying, Matt, is about is human, human interaction. And that's our challenge because, you know, meeting someone and if you do any reports, 80% of any kind of live engagement piece is, a, is meeting someone. And, you know, and where, where something is going wrong, in, here's a description. If you're trying to design a virtual um, hotel room, what are you trying to do? That, that is not the event. That's not the engagement piece. What is, what is the conversation piece and what's the engagement piece? That's where it's going. That's what I find exciting. And I think that's when it goes back to the value of us as pure comms idealists, ideation. Then that's, that's the exciting bit because it isn't what we think it is right now. We're discovering it. And that's, that's brave new world, all that sort of stuff. Hence, you know, we're all kind of saying optimistically, you're actually, actually really understanding what the challenge is, what, what, what is on the table, what the opportunities are. Thanks, Stephen. And from your point of view, Karen, I mean, are, are you sort of doing anything new? Are you sort of innovating on a project level, you know, that, that perhaps in a way that you wouldn't have imagined prior to this? You know what? No, because we, yes and no. Um, <laughs> virtual and hybrid events weren't new for us. That, that's been part of our bread and butter for, since we were in business. Um, I mean, a lot of my personal history even goes much further back beyond that, you know, where we work with huge pharmaceutical companies where they have to train global audiences with sticky, memorable, interesting content. And we turn that into, you know, a TV broadcast. So for us, this wasn't a huge stretch. Um, what is unprecedented is this social distancing piece, the piece where our, yeah. sudden our audiences can't come together, our speakers can't necessarily come together, our colleagues can't come together right on the walls and come up with all the mad madness in the room together that's the weirdness that's the tension for us where we've had to innovate yes but pivoting to virtual or hybrid that wasn't a pivot for us we were already doing it as part of our bread and butter um but but yes the exclusivity of our cur current circumstances the nature of people audiences having to be at home all day not being able to break out of their bubbles that's different and that's the big the big challenge um, but fundamentally, I agree with my, my colleagues here on the phone, uh, what we are, we're storytellers, right? That's what we do. And we're just finding, you know, new and different ways to storytell. But for us, you know, every brief is wildly different. One minute I'm writing a musical about chewing gum, the next I'm delivering, you know, a technical learning event for 
a set 3000 auditors in a, you know, in the Cotswolds water park, the, the nature of our briefs, we Not always have, <laughs> every time we get a really random new brief in the door, that's what we do. And it's never one size fits all. We don't, we aren't, we're not a product company. We don't sell widgets. We sell ideas and creativity and that's what we're still doing right now. We, on that note, I'm just going to come on to our sort of next section. We, you know, we've talked about the challenges. We've talked about the need to innovate, you know, some of the frustrations, but the excitement with that, you know, sort of looking more broadly from an agency point of view. I mean, how are you keeping your team and your kind of selves kind of feeling uh, uh, creative at the moment, Karen? myself say I've had myself on mute but you were saying um how do we continue to keep ourselves creative yeah I mean what sort of things do you do I mean you obviously mentioned that some of this stuff you've been doing anyway but you know are, are you finding that you're needing to approach things in new ways or look at things differently like I said I mean we we always you know this this is part of what we do it's what's the blank canvas what's the challenge challenge the brief do all the things that we've always done um are we doing more research um, into innovative formats? For sure. Um, and are we talking, and this is something I believe Steve touched on earlier, what's been really refreshing is the collaboration versus competitiveness across the industry. And I think that's been really nice. We've been talking to a lot of other peers and, and agency owners, et cetera, about you know, what are you doing? How are you navigating this? So, so certainly inspiration within the industry, but then beyond, um, I'm having to look in funky places, right? Like I'm, <laughs> I'm at home with my two kids. I'm getting a lot of inspiration from my kids. Um, and, and in fact, some, some phenomenal, some, some phenomenal best practices. My, my, my just turned four year old, um, he goes to a Montessori school and there's a Montessori app he's doing. Talk about user experience. It blows the doors off of anything I've seen out there. And, and so just getting ideas in unexpected places that I wouldn't have necessarily looked at before um, I, I do think there's an incredible pressure right now, right? We don't normally come up with creative ideas in this sort of nine to five Zoom window. So I think it's really important to break out of that. And and so for the first few weeks, I fell into that trap of look busy, be on every Zoom call. And I, I've had to stop that for my own sanity and for my own, um, you know, mental well-being and for my own inspiration. So I step away. I have a, um, I bought a 3M Toblerone flip chart dry erase thing that I pop up and I create a little brainstorming studio and I, you know, I might involve my colleagues in that or I'll have a bit of self-reflection time. I've, got, I've used old school techniques like the creative whack pack um, and, you know, different devices, lateral thinking from Edward de Bono, just stepping away from the screen um, and then being able to come back to the problem, looking at it differently, looking at it from, you know, like I said, a widened lens. Um, so, so yeah, looking in different places. And I think a really important thing is to give ourselves some grace, right? This is hard. Um, we are, we're in some sort of fishbowl experiment right now. So, you know, <laughs> a watch pot never boils and, a, you know, an under pressure creative doesn't pop. So just relax, get into a state of flow and it might come to you. Hi, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just, um, I think actually it's not just about, you know, we have creative teams, creative departments, and I don't actually think What's really nice, actually, it's about the teaming. And, and I've found actually creativity coming from all angles. We've talked about the public, but actually within an agency, we're getting uh, different, the, the different departments together and you're getting some brilliant creative come out of really good teaming there. Because they've all got a slightly different angle and they're all actually consuming, they're seeing uh, you know, across different channels, different ways or, or, or people are approaching it. You know, the amount of memes we've all seen. Uh, and you, uh, Karen, I think you mentioned TikTok earlier, which again, Definitely not my, uh, I'm not the target audience for that one either. But I, I think the creativity we've seen coming out there, but actually is coming into our teams. Uh, and I know at Swell, uh, we're putting different teams together with great success who are actually just inspiring each other. And then that's what the client um, wants to see as well, is some of these ideas. That, uh, and you don't need to be uh, an architect, software architect to do this. Um, this again, it relates back to, the innate talent um, in this industry and the amount of people and actually finding gathering uh, gathering that creative from all different sorts of uh, uh, sources in, inside the agency is really actually energizing for the teams and seeing how much they've thought they've, they've actually pushed outside of their, their kind of old defined roles is inspirational um, and I say I have to take hat off to most of all the industry for actually doing exactly the same as well and just looking um, uh, with a wider horizon and, and bringing new people into those teams. 
Thanks, Matt. Hi, Steve. Um, yeah, just, just two things. Kind of one from a more of an internal perspective is we're probably having the most best brainstorms, collaboration, focus from my creative teams on Zoom meetings because I can look everyone in the eye and everyone's focused. And actually the throughput and the output has been a proper collaboration. You know, I don't know about you, you guys, in some of the, my agency in a bad day, let's have a brainstorm, no one turns up and they're eating the sandwich. So that, there you go. Um, but I, what I, I hope and I think will have um, come out of necessity is honesty and transparency as well. And when, what I say about that is like, be honest about what you're good at, be transparent about what you're actually working with as a collaborator and much more overt in saying, these guys are good at this. These guys are good at this and we're good at this. Uh, and that was driven, unfortunately, by economic reasons, primarily. But secondly, I think that's part of the new way of working. You've got to be, stick what you're good at. I don't know about you guys, I mean, I've been in this industry 37 years ago and at one stage you had to make out, everything was in house, it's all owned by us. It's all white labeled. We do everything under the sun. Guys, that is finished. And it's also very expensive. So stick what you're good at. Be, be, be the storytellers and do your comms expertise. And then the tech guy will be the tech person. There is absolutely a blend of technology coming on. Yeah. Um, if the tech guy thinks they can do your conference, your event, they're, they're stupid. And if you think you're going to do their platform, you're stupid too. But together, and be honest about it, that's how you're going to work. And speaking on the last four weeks that's getting a lot of resonance with our clients and our clients are just as confused as we are um we've turned down briefs because we say that's not for us um and then going back to the exciting bit because we are seeing back the value of what we do you know is connect audiences make mm. an impact on the business generate more profit make you know so that's great and hence why um the excitement and I, and I can tell from there's a buzz in my team there's a buzz in my firm yeah we are worried about the business you know we're worried about it going to the future but there's a buzz um and it's actually been a shot in the arm for us to be honest to go well what do we really do oh we do that oh, we do that oh, likewise Karen, we've been hybrid events for the last 20 years we just call them web streaming webinar remote to road shows you know but you know it's the same thing to us so it hasn't been that matter of evolution but i think it's just focused clients on what they're trying to do instead of rebooking an event. We did it last year, we'll do it again. And we've always said, why? <laughs> so anyway, Angela. Angela, I was gonna to come to you next, absolutely, because I think what I'd love to do is to bridge this thing about how people are experiencing that at the moment with what people are learning. Mm. I mean, I'll let you comment first, and then I was gonna ask you a question about that as well. Okay. I, I mean, I was really that I was really interested to hear what everybody's saying about that, and I completely agree with Steve about really understanding where your expertise is, and then pulling those other things in that are going to help deliver that to the client, and asking those big questions. I think that maybe some of the excitement amongst agencies and individuals at the moment, and why people are like, "Yeah, I want to be on the brainstorm," is obviously there's the human factor. They're in their living room with the cat, and they'd quite like to talk to somebody even on a screen, um, but setting that aside. I think the other thing is, is that my perception looking at, you know, we've all seen the briefs, the big corporate briefs for brand events, et cetera, et cetera. They often, what they do is that they just seem to ignore the idea that they're talking to a group of humans altogether. It's all to do with, let's download this stuff. We need to tell them this stuff, you know, that that's still very much how how some of those big corporates and small ones operate. And that's a real deadener to creativity. It's a real deadener to generative conversations. It's a deadener to innovation. It's a deadener to empathy and getting people engaged in their companies. And I guess what's interesting now is that because everybody is going through the same human experience, that, that every type of communication has to be on that human level. And uh, I guess what's going to be fascinating going forward is to see how we can continue to have that appreciation of human in all that communication rather than it going mm, going to that kind of level of this is business this is corporate this is shareholders this is finance yeah. rather than who are we and what really matters to us without trying to sound too profound mm. no i don't think at all thanks karen i was just going to say to ask angela to just kind of bridge us into the next point so I'm just conscious of time, but I mean, everybody's talking about some really interesting stuff here, but in your experience as a, as a consultant, is there, 
is there a real danger if suddenly we're all back to normal that a lot of this great stuff gets gets lost? I mean, what is there a key thing that you can offer up in terms of people? How, how, what's the best way to kind of keep hold of some of the things that people are learning? Okay, that's a fantastic question, Dean. And I guess my off the top of my head answer to that is that it will be there is, I think that potentially is a danger. Who knows what's going to happen in the next 24 months, three years? Who, who, who knows? But I guess I feel as though if agencies can be really conscious of the moment, at the moment about the value they add, understanding that value and that that value lies in empathy and creativity and being able to distill that into something meaningful. But the agencies have to be on the front foot around saying we're going to put a value on that creativity and we're going to link it to what it means to your business from a client point of view and that connection between what can we do for you it's really important you can see we can get an outcome has always been essential to success and i i think it's going to be even more so going forward thanks angela um, i'm just going to come to yourself next karen i don't know if you wanted to respond to the point before but i don't know if there's anything you can sort of talk across there that sort of takes us into perhaps something that you think what's the key thing that you've learned that you might take forward i um, don't know if it's a bad thing i've i've learned so much because i i think you have to be careful about being too prophetic or you know predictions and all of that because i think it drives everyone a bit mad really because we don't know how are any of us to know we're not epidemiologists but um i will say this that you know with 2020 hindsight and looking at what some some of the stuff that i've seen out there and this is not in any way shape or form a criticism of the work of others but i think there was this, um, Steve used the word, a gold rush. I, you know, I've been likening it, I've been calling it the wild, wild west. I think there was this like rush to this reactionary rush to get stuff out there and fill the void. And I wonder if we need to just chill the hell out a little bit and, um, and encourage our clients to, and it'd be better to wait and do it properly um, rather than try to cut and paste the format of what was gonna be a live event into a virtual format because I think I've, I personally witnessed looking out there and trying to tune into as many things as I can to see what's happening. Um, it, there have been lots of crimes against online communication being committed and it's, it's not the best work that our clients can do or the industry can do. We can elevate this and I think we need to think beyond the, the, the little tiny moment in time we're in right now because this is the really in between phase where like lockdown isn't quite lifted. This isn't going to be forever but what does you know what does good look like even six months from now when we still might be not be able to do a huge big live event but what is a great virtual event get our clients focused on that now Let, let's stop this you know death by webinar situation it's just not good enough we can do better it sounded like you were going to pick up on that as well Stephen. um yeah i think um it's it's going back to going back to the basics again you know why, why, why are we trying to do this kind of communication exercise and i think to the point that um angela is making i think it's it's it is a reset of the industry and i think more importantly clients are going to actually think about what they're actually briefing because like you guys i take the money We've done this event, it's an SLT, it's a senior management meeting, and you go, and, and it's all driven by logistics, and, and you know, we've, we've tried to offer measurement. Oh, no, don't do that. Can we do, you know, what's, what's the purpose? What's the reason why? And I think part of this would be to re realize why are they doing this, again, to actually influence an audience, let's go back to simple stuff. Um, therefore, what is the medium for that? And therefore, um, we will, think about the brief in a much more constructive way in some ways it's back to how it used to be i'm gonna be old in some of these guys here in the 80s and 90s where the client came to us as the experts they didn't have the events team or the logistics team or the comms team they said we have this problem what can we do we create audience engagement and over the years it's become yeah procurement etc etc and i think you know that's part of the excitement together i'm also worried it's a flash in the pan as well i'm also worried about the fact that people don't really change i'm also worried about the fact that there's a huge industry pressure from you know, the, the hotels and they want to have big organizations and that i, I worry about that i don't think that's going to happen i think just something in between that's going to happen um because absolutely live and looking someone in the eye and hugging them and 
running off for a beer and do whatever you do in hotels is going to never go away. That's human, that's human nature. And that's why it happens. Um, nothing like going to be entertained and going to a nice venue. But if we can get back to the why and the purpose, and therefore as agencies, that's what we've been doing all the time and be recognized for that. And also commercially, just charge more fees for that and not worry about how much a lighting rig costs. And does it spin? We don't care about that. You know, and then I think that's the great rinse cycle for all agencies. So you know, if you don't wake up to that, you know, as, as, as again, what are you, a comms agency? We're an AV company. Are you a logistics company, a hotel company? That's gonna get sorted out because it's got too mushed so far, in my opinion. Uh, you know, you've got tech companies saying they can do creative for shows and you've got creative agencies saying we own all this kit. That's crazy. Do what you're good at. Stick with it. Thanks, Steve. So I can see you there, Andrew. I just want to give Matt a chance to respond about the point about uh, sort of this, if there's anything key that you're learning from this, Matt, then I'll come back to you, Angela, if that's okay. Uh, I think there's a huge amount uh, of elements. We're learning all the time. <laughs> I think um, it's been quite inspirational to see some of that footage from the random, random sources. And, and also thinking about how we can think of things in different uh, different ways. How we how can we utilize different things? So how can we utilize someone's home uh, in a very different way to what it's had to be before? Because it's their office. It's also got their kids running around, uh, and you're you're actually getting windows and insights into people's lives. That's actually quite nice uh, to get that more human uh, approach back in there. But I think uh, you know we. I'm also feeling that you know brands uh, uh, are being slightly more sincere. Um, no, not overly commercial, and and actually that positivity that uh, I'm seeing in some places is actually really needed because actually I think everyone needs some fun. I mean, like Netflix had a, has had a massive run on comedy. There's no wonder because actually a lot of people need cheering up. But uh, I think bringing some of these elements into what we do, so and, and thinking that actually we don't just have to talk. I mean, uh, initially we had clients come to us saying, right, we want a eight hour uh conference uh transposed to a webinar you're like that's the bonkers who would do that like you know look up even looking online looking at ted there's a reason it's about 18 minutes you just don't do that but but then think well how do you paginate that how do you intersperse those yeah. moments of loveliness how do you bring unexpected into that um because actually everyone thinks it's going to be the same thing they're turning up to every time and it's like a broadcast and it's a one-way piece of traffic so i've I, i've learned and the team have learned a huge amount of different techniques and, and approaches really um, and also it's been kind of a collaborative thing with clients it's been really nice sharing with clients with clients initially we're on a very steep learning curve and I know that, uh, everyone uh, or the colleagues here have I said there's like a panic and everyone like this gold rush but actually there's still this really uh, there's a need more than ever for brands to communicate with their audiences and their internal teams um, you know, in this crisis, we need to find better ways to communicate. And that's not spending eight hours a day on Zoom, uh, despite this being a, a great platform. There's other ways we can do that. Um, and so I think that's been the journey and the learnings across. It's just it's how do we how do we add variety? How do we add contrast to people's days? Um, how do we really connect with people rather than just talking? Um, and I find, as I say, I found it quite inspirational um, for from a creative standpoint. Uh, I think it's really helped the industry uh, and really definitely really helped our agency. Thanks, Matt. No, that's a great response. Um, I think we've got about 10 minutes left um, before we're going to go into Q&A. So did you want to say something, Claire? Oh, you're on mute, Claire. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> can't drive the machine. Um, just to say there are quite a few questions. So I don't know whether you wanted to start taking them or you wanted to get through your last bit and just uh, well, what I was going to suggest was because um, I've not resorted to the yellow card yet so <laughs> um, just because people have been some really interesting stuff I thought perhaps if we get Angela's response and go into the client side of things in particular and then maybe so we leave a good 10 minutes for the questions at the end if that's okay Okay, well, you've only got about five minutes left, so the maths is interesting, but I'm sure we can are overrun we, a bit. Are we, on, are we on till five or are we on till? Oh. Quarter, uh, um, 45 minutes, I think you said. Quarter two. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay, then. Uh, do you want to just respond quickly, Angela, but your point <laughs> there and then we'll go on to the questions. I was only going to say that I think there could be both some really interesting questions and some ideas coming out of the things that don't happen 
during this period and how long it's going to be and who knows what's going to come out of it. We know we don't know. But I suspect there'll be a lot of usual comms and marketing that doesn't take place and that some clients and CMOs and, in, and internal comms directors will be going, we didn't do that and the sky didn't fall in. So why do we need to do it in the future and yeah. what should we be doing and what could we be doing differently? And I think that's, those are going to be fascinating questions that the agencies can be all over and really supporting clients on asking those interesting questions and then coming up with some really fascinating and more interesting ideas. Absolutely. I mean, on that note, I mean, the next section we were going to get into, and apologies, I've failed miserably as a facilitator here because I've been running until <laughs> five o'clock. So uh, I, I am available for children's parties. <laughs> um, but uh, there's one of the questions I saw, Claire, which kind of covers off our next section, which I think would be really good to look at, which is, um, I think, from Stuart saying, given the massive financial impact of this situation on clients, how much do the panel think clients are prepared to invest in creativity? If I could come to you first, Stephen. Uh, so I think it's a very very good question because I think we can't ignore the commercial landscape that is we're in now and the fact that we're, whatever happens we're going to come out of a into a massive recession so absolutely marketing budgets and everyone's be under the microscope going forward and the only way <laughs> is to prove that you're going to make a difference to their business and the only way you're going to do that is to say as experts and talking to your clients trade partners whatever that you know, we will do something that makes them do something that has an impact in your business. Therefore, it will drive more of your revenue, and that's always been what we've been trying to do. I think there'll be more focus on can you prove that, and can you actually measure that? Uh, I don't know about you guys, but the, the magic ROI in a live event just does not exist. Okay, mm -hmm. no matter what anyone says, and I, I'm, I'm ex oh, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, maybe okay. Um, I think the, 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 the blend of technology, the, the more, uh, what, what I'm jealous about digital agencies is data, statistics, analytics at their fingertips. And I would like that same power within our live comms arena, which we don't really have. And if, if, this, if this sort of change brings that together in a standardized way for the industry in some way, and some way that actually qualifies it, then that will go back to, because also you've got to prove your worth to your clients if, if the budget. If, if it's going to generate more revenue for your customer, your client, it's a no-brainer. You wouldn't do it, would you? Would not not do it. If it's an overhead and it's a jolly and it's seen as we do this every year, that's, that's uh, going back to Andrew's point, that will be reviewed. You know, uh, I, I don't really understand the travel and incentive market, um, but obviously it works and it's a very big market. Uh, I do understand the business objective meeting for all your partners to get to once a year that makes a difference to your business. I get that. So again, going back to um, the, the question, yeah, I think it's, 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 uh, it's the financial implications cannot be ignored. There will be survival. And also going back to, let's be absolutely honest, we're all you know, sort of husbandering our cash and nursing our cash. So there's, a, there's this risk and bravery for agencies stroke survival and being here next year yeah and unfortunately that's just an economic commercial decision mm -hmm. so you know i mean yeah that's very all being quite very positive you've got to underpin that all about reality mm -hmm. and also who knows what it's going to be you know which is we see as a positive because no one else does so let's be the head of the game but um mm -hmm. it, 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 but it's serious it's, it's also mm -hmm. serious stuff. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I would say from, from our experience at Gorilla Gorilla, the, the clients that we've approached proactively with creative ideas have responded really well. Even if they've said, I don't think that's right for us now, um, it, it, it's, it's opening up another conversation. It's showing that we're there to support yep. them. It's keeping our team kind of creatively active and engaged and so on. And actually we're finding that quite often you can do those creative explorations once around one comms problem or whatever, and actually apply that then to lots of different clients for sure. Sorry, you, Angela, you had your hand up then. I was just going to say that's good. I completely understand that. And that's totally where I think lots of people have 
like yourselves have been reaching out to clients to say we were thinking this we've been doing this would you be interested in this this is what we thought of for you we were considering what you said recently and that kind of that kind of proactivity when we undertake uh, client research exercises so on behalf of agencies we talk to their clients uh, about a whole range of subjects one of the things that comes back time and time again are the clients saying we'd really love it if they could be more proactive there is that tendency for agencies to be very active when they're in delivery mode and then there's a gap between those conversations so they they've always asked for that proactivity and i think if you can be proactive now be those trusted experts who especially with those clients where you have a real strategic relationship you understand their business you talk their language you can have those conversations to talk about what could be meaningful for their business at, the, at this time and that, that's always going to be a positive something positive will always come out of that Claire, sorry, I, I'm conscious that oh, my we've got no time, poor, poor timekeeping is... Sorry, uh, there's just a, another question here that's been asked in several different ways. Um, so I just wanted to put this to the panel was, how are agencies keeping creative sessions, strategy meetings, team meetings and so forth? Uh, how are they keeping them, uh, their teams going and what platforms are they using and what strategies are they uh, implementing to, to keep the team engaged and creative so so basically your employees so was that a question uh, aimed at us internally with our own teams versus yes. what we're doing? i think people are looking for idea for ideas and suggestions and what platforms people are using and so on sure well it's good to matt, talk sorry i'm sorry matt you go ahead. i think matt had his hand up there sorry yeah so um I think the process is essential and, and actually when you look at how you work a digital process it's quite slightly different or very different to uh, sometimes the event processes but but actually the collaboration tools is a really good question um we, we've been using um, we've been using quite a while Miro, a digital whiteboard um really good for collaborating with teams and getting those ideas going um and mixing that together and it also offers a number of other tools as well but I think it's it's making sure that you have a, a very good structure and process uh, set out. It's um, it's the, the Miro is only as good as that kind of structure and process you put into it. Um, Check-ins on teams and then one to one, making sure you actually catch up with people. Because I, I think we do so many Zoom meetings sometimes with such big groups, you forget to uh, catch up with smaller groups and individuals. Um, so it's a number of different techniques and methods. Um, and I suppose trying to structure your Zoom meetings a little bit more so you don't, you know, you put it in for an hour because that's the time slot. Um, you don't need that always. And sometimes I find actually faster paced meetings uh, are a lot more productive when um, you set a fire on, underneath everyone and get them motivated and, and drive it forward. You often come up with some of the best ideas. As I think, you know, we, it, we're seeing in this time when we're under pressure, you could see some great ideas come to fruition. Hi, oh, you're with Karen. Yeah. yeah, so all of the things that my colleagues have said, um, you know, Matt, we also use Teams and use mm -hmm. chat functions in that um, yeah. and, and Zoom. So we use a, a blend of, of various tools, even WhatsApp, believe it or not, just trying to create a little bit more of in the moment on this, you know, in, in, the, in the moment in time, if that's what's available to you. Um, we've also been doing some just structured things like Mondays, Monday afternoons, we do um, a kind of business news slash, and this is like a round robin update and it's fast paced. It's not meant to keep everybody on the phone for too long, but it's a way of just connecting, huddling. We call them our herd huddles because we call ourselves the herd. Um, on Wednesday mornings, we've, um, we've introduced bite-sized learning sessions. So it's a Monday morning inspiration. We've, we've, We've um, delivered a whole series um, in the last three weeks of creative writing workshops, which people have loved, and they've been able to actually apply the learning. So copywriting hacks and everything, because everybody, no matter if you're a producer, uh, you know, a logistics person, whatever your job, you need to be a good writer because you're engaging with audiences, be those clients or whatever it is. So it, it's a great art and it's sometimes a lost art. So things like that, investing in ourselves. And then on Friday, we've introduced fireside chats. It used to be um, Friday visit four in the office where we'd bust out champagne, but we're more on a beer budget right now. So um, <laughs> we're doing, we're doing you know, lower key gatherings on Friday virtually, um, sometimes pure inspiration. Sometimes this is something I attended and I wanna share it about it. So three fast paced little Pecha Kucha presentations that show ideas and share inspiration from out there in the industry. And then sometimes pure fun. Like we had um, on Friday, we're having a, 
um, a school quiz and um, uh, on Easter, Easter Friday, we had a, um, an Easter bonnet virtual parade. Everybody showed up in really random hats and, um, and we did a hilarious pub quiz. So just, just random things like that, but really important to be investing in ourselves and the camaraderie that that is what makes us special. Hope that um, helps for whoever's on the line. <laughs> uh, um, I am just conscious that we we, we have run over. So um, if, if it's okay with everybody, I am going to uh, draw a line there. Thank you all very, very much indeed. It was really nice spending time with you. Um, before we go, can I just remind our audience um, to go into the chat box and answer the question, um, one word to describe your current creative state. There's already some appeared in there and uh, they are varied, I'll grant that. Um, so look forward to uh, reading those and we'll, we'll post those out on our social media and on our um, channel. This is uh, recorded as well. So if anybody wants to go back and pick up some of the points, it'll be on our website from tomorrow. Um, but with that, I'd like to thank Dean, Karen, Steve, Matt and Angela. Thank you so much. It was a really, really enjoyable session. Thank, and thank you. you for taking part and thank really you to good. our attendees as well.